Careful. Don't want to burn your tongue. Clear eyes. New hearts. John Fox can't lose. That's right, John Fox returned for his first game after having his aortic valve replaced. And his team thanked him with 37 first downs, 51 points, a victory, and a record-setting field goal. The fans thanked Fox by getting schnockered. Cold but schnockered. I believe those are the exact same circumstances that led to my conception. I'm Brandon Perna. I'm on my way to getting schnockered, and you're watching That's Good Broncos. It was a cold Sunday in Denver, Colorado, but 70,000 plus idiots made their way to the stadium to watch the Broncos beat the Tennessee Titans 51 to 28. The Broncos went down early, 0 to 7, after a Tennessee touchdown or some bullshit. I guess Ryan Fitzpatrick and his beard got lucky. Just look at that beautiful, magnificent beard. I respect his beard almost as much as I respect his degree from Harvard. I could have went to harder, harder. I could have went to Harvard, but I can't say the word Harvard. Not only did John Fox return to Denver with more heart, he also came back with bigger balls as the Broncos went for it on fourth down twice on the opening drive. The first was this run by Noshawn Moreno. Ooh, that stings, Tennessee. And the second was this fourth and goal Manning converts, making a running touchdown throw to Wes Welker to tie the game at seven. Tennessee went up 14 to seven due to a 94 yard kick return scene here. I guess when you lead the league in touchbacks, you can get a little rusty on kick coverage. But I knew we were okay. I knew Tennessee was going to lose when I saw what they were drinking on the sideline. Chicken broth and hot chocolate, like a bunch of knuckle fuckers. That one's for you, Ron. My best friend's dad, Ron, taught me that only knuckle fuckers drink chicken broth and hot chocolate during a football game. Although had the Titans won, I would have said the reason they won is the chicken broth and not chocolate. But they lost. And I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but Phil Simms and Jim Nance called the best game of their lives. Here's Sims talking about the blocking on a Moreno run. Oh, that double team blocking to the right side, that was awesome. No, you're awesome, Phil. And Nance got in on it too. Wait, I thought he couldn't throw the football in cold weather. Well, that's all I've read all week long. I wish Jim Nance could be sarcastic for an entire game. That would be the best commentated game of all time. The first quarter was winding down and then Big Dick Decker made this great catch scoring what everyone except me thought was a touchdown. Decker didn't like it. He yelled, the bullshit, the bullshit. This, for some reason, helped Jim Nance decide what he was going to get his grandkids for Christmas. Fanny pack, fanny pack, the fanny pack, the fanny pack. Fanny packs, they're convenient and practical. A lot better than stupid pockets. Fucking pockets suck. And Passion of the Moreno continued as Nance and Sims talked about his giant tears. You know, the giant tear duck deluge, the town crier. Are those supposed to be funny? I mean, because I don't get it. Uh, yes, Phil Sims, it is supposed to be funny. It was funny because he has big gulp sized tears. Super sized tears. Pepsi Big Slam sized tears. Any extremely large sized drink of tears reference you could think of, that's what Moreno had. Tennessee scored another touchdown, as you can see here. It didn't matter that they were up 21 to 10 because after the Broncos dropped their fifth pass of the day, Peyton Manning throws a strike to Julius Thomas on this eight yard touchdown pass. That's a perfect throw and a perfect catch. Peyton Manning should really get the Big Dick Player Award for this game. He played incredible. But Manning has more awards than Travis Henry has children. You know who doesn't have any awards? Matt, I can tickle my toes and the tip of my penis at the same time with the same hand because I just kicked a 64 yard field goal in 13 degree weather Prater. History is made! That's right, Nance. Goddamn right history was made. I have never been so excited about a field goal before, except when Jason Elam tied the record at 63 yards against the Jacksonville Jaguars in 1996? Seven? But Elam's kick was meaningless, and the weather was warm. That kick gave us a lot of momentum going in halftime, which I believe sparked the second half onslaught of touchdowns and field goals by the Denver Broncos. 
Demarius Thomas got things going with this 38-yard pass from Peyton Manning and followed it up with this touchdown grab in the back of the end zone. You know what they say, only good things happen in the back of the end zone. Nobody fucking says that. Um, the Broncos grinded it out again with a one-yard, no Sean Moreno touchdown. And Nate Irving blew up Leon Washington on this kick. Wabamo! Oh, bam! Washington, you got laid out! And then CJ Fumble K got stripped here by Von Miller. <laughs> hey CJ, is it too cold for you? Uh, I thought you'd be used to the cold from all that ice you wear on your teeth. Or are you only good at playing in warm weather? <laughs> Cause it's a grill. <laughs> Are those supposed to be funny? I mean, because I don't get it. Yes, Bill, it's supposed to be funny. You know, neither one of us is hip enough to use the words ice or grill, unless we're at a barbecue. Anyway, that fumble uh, gave way to this Eric Decker touchdown. It was only a 20-yarder, no big deal. Now, 44 points would have been plenty, but Moneyball wanted the rock, so we gave Monty Moneyball the rock, and he scored our final touchdown of the day on this mean five-yard touchdown run. Broncos win 51-28. Peyton Manning is a genius. Everybody knows that. But he's also insane. Just look at this picture of him. Helmet on, one shoe on, one foot in the hot tub, and an iPad. If that was Tom Brady, he'd be sitting there with freshly gelled hair, a scarf, maybe an Armani suit. You're the best quarterback in the league, my ass. You would have put both feet in the hot tub. Not Manning. One foot in the tub and one cleat still on because he knows that I can't really think of a good reason as to why he only has one shoe on, but he knows he needs it. And I almost got to sing a new kickoff song. I've been working on it for a while. It goes a little something like, Caldwell Road, but it got Caldwell back. If you do score a touchdown on a kick return, Caldwell, I will come up with a better song than that for you. And after that holding call, Nate Washington was practicing for his post-NFL career as a traffic cop. Fucking idiot. A little too much celebrating for a team that lost 51 to 28. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Broncos. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. Also, make sure to go to the Pro Football Spot channel. Subscribe there so you can watch the NFL videos I also do every week because I'm fucking good at my job and it's pretty good. I also wanted to take a quick second to thank Justine Fippen, who sent me a message after the John Fox episode. She shared a story with me about her son who had to have heart valve surgery when he was only four days old. His name is Anthony Bud Zayden Brady, and he's cute as hell. He's eight months old now and is perfectly healthy. I thought it was really cool for her to share that with me and I just wanted to give them a shout out. She's raising him right to be a Broncos fan, but we, we've we got to do something about that last name. Brady? How about Anthony Bud Zayden Mecklenburg? Think about it. Think about it, Justine. <laughs>